applications of recombinant DNA technology. The biotechnology in the early 1970s was concerned with the generation of commercial products through the natural metabolic action of microorganisms. However, the nature of biotechnology was changed forever with the event of recombinant DNA technology. This technology allows the construction of desired recombinant DNA molecule at will. The production of human insulin and bacteria, which seemed like a science fiction some few decades ago, was made possible due to development of recombinant DNA technology. The laborious and time-consuming conventional methods of developing new plant varieties can be replaced by genetic engineering techniques to produce transnic plants of desired characters. Today, let us discuss some of the important applications of recombinant DNA technology in the field of agriculture and medicine. Herbicide resistant transnic plants. There is about 10% loss in global crop production annually due to weed infestation. The unwanted weeds have to be removed using herbicides, but these chemicals do not discriminate weeds from useful plants. The transgenic herbicide resistant plants developed through genetic engineering techniques can withstand deadly effect of herbicide thereby allowing only the destruction of unwanted weeds. Glyphosate is one of the commonly used herbicide which inhibits the enzyme 5 enol pyrovile schemat 3 phosphate synthase in short EPSPS which is involved in aromatic amino acid synthesis in plants. Three strategies are usually employed for production of glyphosate-resistant transnic plants. The first one, overproduction of EPS-PS enzyme. Secondly, production of EPS-EPS enzyme not affected by glyphosate. Third, production of COX enzyme which deactivates the glyphosate. The mutant EPSPS gene and GOX have been used for the production of Roundup Ready Maize variety by Monsanto USA. Now let us take off insect resistant transnic plants. Insect resistant transnic plants are produced through genetic engineering of crop plants with insecticidal toxins. One of the insecticidal proteins is the crystallized or cry proteins produced by Bacillus thuringiensis, which kills harmful insect and larva. The cry proteins are produced by chrysins, the protoxin cry protein having the size of 130 kilodalton has toxic function localized in N terminal half while the chrysaline nature is produced by C terminal half. When the cry proteins are ingested by the insects, proteolytic cleavis is produced in the alkaline environment of insect meat cut, producing a 60 kilodalton toxic core fragment. The cry proteins are about 80,000 times more toxic to the target insects than those conventionally used organophosphate insecticides and also are highly selective in their actions. Insecticidal protein genes such as Cry1AA, Cry1AB, and Cry1AC derived from Bacillus thuringiensis subspecies Karstiki have been used to develop insect-resistant transnic plants. The low level of chrysin expression can be improved with the use of truncated zinc containing only the N-terminal portion and a strong promoter. 
The commercially available BT cotton is the bluff wheat cry 1st protein from Bacillus thuringiensis and is resistant against insect Helicobarba amirgyra. Next, slow ripening fruits. Antisense RNA technology is used to develop transnic tomato with slow ripening fruits. The antisense zin of polygalactorunase enzyme is introduced into the plant which also contains the endogenous normal polygalactorunase zin. The transcription of the two zins in the nucleus yields antisense and sense RNA transcripts which will best pair to produce double-stranded RNA molecule. This event prevents the translation of messenger RNA and double-stranded RNA is destroyed by RNAs present in the nucleus. The transnic tomato developed by Calzin, a US-based biotechnology company using antisense RNA technology is known as flavor shaver tomato. The US Food and Drug Administration on 18 of May 1994 ruled that the flavor shaver tomato was as safe for human consumption as normal tomatoes that were produced by conventional means. Next, let us take off transnic colon rice. Vitamin A deficiency is a common problem in those regions where rice is consumed as staple food. This is because the rice grain does not contain pro-vitamin or beta-carotene, which is important for vitamin A production. Deficiency of vitamin A produces night blindness among the children. Transnic rice can be created which contains high quantities of beta-carotene and are called golden rice because the grains are yellow or golden color due to rich content of beta-carotene. Three transins which provide phyton synthesis, phyton desaturase, zeta-carotene desaturase and Lycophen like cyclist activities are transferred into rice using agrobacterium mediated gene transfer. The transnic golden rice contains pro vitamin as high as 85% of the total carotenoids present in the rice grains. Next, we have molecular farming. The plants are used as bioreactor for large-scale production of proteins and chemicals which can be completely novel to them. The advantages of using plants as bioreactor are that they are easy to grow and can generate considerable biomass. In laboratory scale, plants have been used to produce bioplastic polyhydroxy butyrate, monoclonal antibodies, vaccines, and a number of potential therapeutic agents. Let us take off the production of bioplastic in plant. The production of bioplastics or biodegradable plastics in plants is one of the important examples of molecular farming. Polyhydroxyalkanoids PSA from the bioplastics and polyhydroxybutyrate PSB is the best characterized PSA which is usually found as intracellular inclusions in wide variety of bacteria. PSB accumulates as high molecular weight polymer in alkalizens eutropus up to 80% of the bacterial dry weight. Expression of PSAA, PSAB, and PSAC is essential for polyhydroxybutyrate production. 
in one skim of transnic plant production containing PSB, only two zins, PSAB and PSAC, were introduced into Arabidopsis plants because acetoacetyl CoA was already present in the cytoplasm at the start of the pathway of isoprepanoid production. The microbodies of bioplastics were randomly formed in cytosol, nucleus, and vacuoles as the introduced two genes were not tagged with target peptide sequences. The amount of bioplastics was relatively low, 20 to 100 microgram per gram press weight. In the second method, all the three genes, PSA, PSAB, and PSAC were transferred into Arabidopsis plant after tagging with Robisco's small subunit transit peptide. The PSB biosynthesis pathway occurred only in the chloroplast and PSB accumulation was more. Now let us take off application of recombinant DNA technology in medicine. Vaccine. Conventional vaccines contain either a kill inactivated or a live non virulent attenuated form of an infectious agent capable of evoking an immune response. There are many limitations associated with present system of vaccine production. Some of the drawbacks are difficulty to grow infectious agent in culture, the use of animal cell culture to produce animal and human viruses is expensive, possibility of reversion of attenuated strains to virulent form, and limited shelf life of the vaccine, and requirement of cold fridge for storage. With the event of recombinant DNA technology, there are possibilities of generating new vaccines which can overcome the shortcomings of traditional vaccines. The reversion of attenuated infectious agent to virulent form can be prevented by generating a genetic engineered agent which could be used as a live vaccine. In this case, the virulent genes can be deleted from the infectious agent but still it can stimulate an immunological response. The infectious agent will not be able to reacquire the whole deleted virulent genes while growing in pure culture. In case of infectious agent which cannot be grown in the culture, the genes with cuts for proteins having critical antigenic determinants can be isolated, cloned, and expressed in another host like E. coli. The proteins derived from the new host can be utilized to develop vaccines. Next is the identification of disease genes. The development of recombinant DNA technology has revolutionized the search and successful identification of many defective genes which cause number of genetic diseases like Huntington's disease, cystic fibrosis, Tay-Sachs disease, Howe River syndrome disease, etc. Huntington disease ISD, is progressive neurogenerative disease caused by an autosomal dominant mutation. The Huntington gene is located at the end of short arm of chromosome 4 and spans about 210 kilovage. A normal Huntington gene contains a trinucleotide refit CSG of less than 36 copies, while the mutated gene comprises more than 36 copies up to 100 of the trinucleotide repeat. A simple and accurate DNA test for ISD mutation 
can be provided using recombinant DNA techniques. If the nucleotide sequences of Huntington zine on either side of the trinucleotide repeat region are known, oligonucleotide primers can be prepared and used to amplify the region by PCR. The number of CAZ repeats could be determined by polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis. Thus, individuals at risk for carrying the mutant Huntington gene can easily be tested for its presence. A test can be easily performed prenatally on fetal cells obtained by immunosynthesis or cryonic biopsy as the DNA required for performing the test is very small. The individual can be tested to check whether he or she is carrying the defective zine through the simple DNA test. Next, let us see the production of eukaryotic proteins in bacteria. Human insulin was the first human protein produced in microbes using recombinant DNA technology in 1982. Since then, several other human proteins like blood clotting factor 8, plasminogen activator, and human growth hormone have been produced in microbes at commercial scale. The human growth hormone is the second genetically engineered pharmaceutical protein to be approved for human use by U.S. Food and Drug Administration after human insulin. This is a single polypeptide chain of 191 amino acid long and is required for normal growth. The human growth hormone coding sequence must be placed under the control of E. coli regulatory elements in order to express successfully in E. coli. The human growth hormone coding sequences was joined to the promoter and ribosome binding sequences of E. coli like operon. To make this happen, the restriction enzymes IgE3 cuts the cDNA of human growth hormone obtained from cDNA library of human pituitary gland at a site located of the 23rd codon of the gene. The sequence representing the first 23 codons of the gene was chemically synthesized and joined to partial cDNA sequence encoding amino acids 24 to 191. The whole unit was then inserted into the plasmid carrying the lag regulatory signals and introduced into E. coli by transformation. The human growth hormone produced in E. coli contain methionine at the amino terminus. The human growth hormone so synthesized in the E. coli was fully active in spite of the presence of extra amino acid in the form of methionine. Human Zin Therapy Zin Therapy offers the most promising approach to successful treatment of some of the inherited genetic diseases which are difficult to treat. Zin Therapy involves adding a normal copy of the zine in order to replace the defective coffee in affected individual. The zine which has been introduced into the individual is called the transgene and the recipient organism carrying the introduced zine is termed as transgenic. The normal transgene will synthesize the missing zine product to restore the normal phenotype of the affected individual. The first gene therapy was performed on four-year-old girl suffering from adenosine diaminase deficient severe combined immunodeficiency disease, in short ADASCID, in 1990. Individual with skit lacks adenosine deaminase ADA because of which there is accumulation of deoxyadenosine at toxic levels 
in T-cells. There is no immune system in the skin-affected individuals due to the absence of T-cells. The newborns with ADA skit seldom live more than a few years. For the successful gene therapy of ADA skit patient, a retroviral vector was first constructed with a human ADA gene under the control of strong promoter SB40. The white blood cells from the patient were isolated and the functional copies of the gene were introduced into the white cells with the help of retroviral vector. The ADA containing retroviral DNA was integrated into the chromosomes of the white blood cells. The transient expression was verified by growing the transformed cells in the culture. The white blood cells with ADA gene were finally infused into the patient's circulatory system. The synthesis of ADA restored the immune function of the affected individual. The treatment must be repeated periodically to improve immune function of the patient. So, repeated infusions of the white blood cells with functional ADA genes have been performed on the patients. Finally, we'll come to the conclusion. Recombinant DNA technology has wide range of application in the field of agriculture and medicine. Several important agricultural crops have been transformed with transients to produce new varieties of transnic plants with desirable characters. Plants have been genetically manipulated and engineered to be resistant against harmful insect pathogens, viruses, and herbicides. Transnic plants with improved nutritional contents in terms of amino acids, fats, iron, and vitamins have also been successfully developed. Plants have also been genetically engineered to be used as bioreactor for large-scale production of therapeutic proteins. Production of new recombinant vaccines, therapeutic protein, identification of defective genes, use of DNA fingerprints in solving forensic cases, and treatment of rare genetic diseases with gene therapy are some of the important applications of recombinant DNA technology in medicine. With the present space, with which the molecular and genetic engineering research is undergoing, there is a high possibility that many recombinant DNA technology products may soon occupy a dominant position in the field of agriculture and medicine.